Hello YouTube and welcome to another exciting episode of that brilliant tech show called Slotted In There where we talk about games, tech and all those things. It's episode six and six is a good number but not on its own. If you have three sixes then something very demonic and exciting will happen to this episode I feel like a lot. So let me introduce my co-pilots uh, Damien and Tim. Hello. Hello. So I'm how are we sorry. this week gentlemen? <laughs> Groovy baby. Groovy. Yeah, peachy, never better. Always. We're always good like that, aren't we? We're such happy people. Uh, anything exciting that you'd like to share with the group before we get any episode? Not that I can share on air, no. And not not that I've seen Damien do that I can share on air. Wow. <laughs> That's how Standard. I... Uh, yeah, well, I got uh, very angry this week um, and because I was trying to fix my laptop. And it just wasn't happening. You know, when you, you just spent so long trying to fix something because of the problem, you can't find what it is. And you, you just get very frustrated. Uh, I, I just threw it across the room and it smashed a bit and I lost some keys. I, I, I just lost control. And, you know. In fairness, that was better than the last one. That's I fair. mean, it's not great. <laughs> but but I, I'm improving slightly. One. Improving slightly. Anyway, let's get on with the show. So, this week in gaming, where we like to show you some of the games we've been playing that hopefully you'll like and enjoy um, on some games you might not like and enjoy, but you'll steer clear of because it's a good service either way that we're doing. Uh, so, gentlemen, who would like to start this week with what they've been playing? Um, Damien, would you like to start? No, I want to start with Tim in one of his card games. You want to start with Tim first? Well, I didn't want to pick on Tim because he had started There's the past two weeks. So. No cards, no cards. This week, I have been playing Portal. Revolution. Now, I'm a fan of the Portal games, you know, both of them, the two of them. So what is this? What is this? What is this? Portal Revolution mod? Now, it's no secret that Valve doesn't make trilogies. So how does a game like this come into being? Well, it's fan-made. And God bless them. They've done a cracking job on this. Now, Portal Revolution is one of many fan-made games in the Portal genre. We did it. We actually did it. Well, not yet, but we will have done it soon. What are you waiting for? Let's go! This just happens to be an exceptional example of one. It's free to play, but consider buying the plush pack or the soundtrack to help out the developer, Second Face Software. If, like me, you desperately need to scratch that Portal itch, this is a fabulous option. You can battle your way through an entirely new set of devious puzzles that are just as devious if not more so than the original. I came unstuck on multiple occasions desperately trying to find my way past obstacles that seemed at first to be utterly impenetrable. But I can assure you all of the puzzles work, you just have to find the solution. Portal is the kind of game that is particularly close to my heart. The one kind of game that I really enjoy in this world is one with simple mechanics but complex problems. Probably the first game that I came across that really scratched that itch was Fantastic Contraption which at the time was just a flash game, it since made its way into VR. But this is exactly that kind of game. You have cubes, buttons, switches and a blue and an orange portal. That's all of the tools that you need. What's great about this is it means you can dip into this game whenever you want to. You don't have to learn a new complex system each time. You simply need to know the basics. And that is enough to solve any problem that you come up against. By contrast, a game at the other end of this spectrum would be something like Elite Dangerous, where it takes me maybe a week or so to relearn all the controls if I've taken a year off, for example. So, what are you waiting for? Pick up that portal gun one more time and viva la revolution! Have you both played the portal games? Yes. No. 
Why not, Chris? I know. I was I was watching that, and I keep thinking, why have not? It's one of those games I keep meaning to get back to and have a look at. Um, and like from watching your video, it's like it's a really good puzzle game, and I'm quite surprised it's still being supported. To be honest, and people are modding and doing things like that because it's quite old oh, yeah. now. Yeah, quite an old game. Yeah, yeah, but, it's yeah. Getting on. But it, the, one of the nice things though is it, it runs on the Source Engine, the Steam Source Engine, and and it'll run on virtually no computing power. It's astonishing how well those games run. I've I've run it on like a, a you know little mini PCs, and you're getting close to sixty FPS. With you know the, these things, I've, yeah, I'm trying to pick this one up because uh, I've had that in videos before, and it, that'll run it. And it, this is virtually nothing in terms of power, so it's really easy to get into, really easy to play. Well, uh, until you get to the puzzles, that is, in which case it suddenly becomes very difficult at points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm quite surprised Damien's played it because I don't think you're a fan of puzzle games, are you, Damien? Uh, I'm, I'm not normally no, but Portal's just amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. The level of difficulty does increase, obviously, when you go through it. Um, but the, the the comedy that's in it, the the, the humour that goes along with it, with Glados and and everything, it, it you can't not play it. It's brilliant. Especially the second one, Stephen Merchant was a, a great choice for Wheatley. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds yeah. good. I will have to get around to it, get it off a of backlog, and get it played. Well, um, well, if you ever but... if you ever get around to playing two, let me know because I'll join in with you. You can oh, play that co-op. Player? You it, can oh, do it. Really? Well, there there is a two player game which is entirely independent of Portal Two, so you can play Portal Two, and then you can play. If you really enjoy that, you can go on and play it as co-op with a friend. Sounds good. Sounds good. Worth uh, it. Oh yeah, it's worth it. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's a, that's actually a good game to get going. We're off to one winner, I think, Thank already. You. Who knew? Who knew? Shocking shocks and surprises each week. Keep stay stay tuned. Uh, but the cake brilliant. is a lie. Uh, <laughs> um, would you like to do your game next, Damien, or shall I? Do? I do mine. I'll, I'll I'll go with mine. So, um, continuing the zombie theme. Uh, that that the presidents was set last week by Tim. This week, I basically played a good zombie game. I played Stubbs the Zombie. The year is 1959. The location... The progressive science-laden city of Punchbowl. Dateline, Pennsylvania, where one city has entered the 21st century 50 years ahead of schedule. Welcome to Punchbowl, a city built for the space age. Here in Punchbowl, experimental science and state-of-the-art technology create a futuristic paradise the lights of which have never been seen. A shining beacon of ideal living infused with retro-futuristic technology. What a time to be alive. Talking about it, and why should they? Punchbowl is a model of good old American ingenuity. Well, as alive as a walking corpse can be, you take on the role of the main man himself, Stubbs. Or if you want to couch co-op, Grubs. Well, why don't you call your new friends over? And head out into the city for some rather humorous hijinks. And of course, to paint the town red, blood red, from eating the inhabitants. What the? My partner. The game mechanics are good with some very innovative controls. And the graphics are not too bad for a game of this age. The humour is a little highbrow in places with some double entendres mixed in. And I'm going to make sure uh, nothing unseemly happens on this uh, wonderful, uh, Sunny. fabulous, Sunny. huge eyes up here. Day. But I found this to be several hours of entertaining good fun. You may even find yourself laughing along with some of the one-liners and puns that the NPCs spout out. I got a wife and kids! If you've ever wondered what it's like to be the zombie, oh, munching on the living, You're killing me! Taking charge of a horde. <laughs> huh? Or wanted to throw your gut as a grenade then wonder and want no more. 
this game is full of that and more, which I'll not spoil for you as it's fun to find out just what limbs and body parts are capable of. My arm. <laughs> when you're a dead man walking. Let's see The Undertaker do some of this in the WWE. I personally enjoy this game for its simplicity and bad humour. An enjoyable game to play alone, but added fun with a friend, or even better, your partner. As after all, did I mention that this is a love story? Meet me, Maggie Monday. Well, it's a dead good game. What you know? What's not to like about it? It's brilliant. Boo! It, <laughs> boo! Mate, no VR required. This is just gameplay. <laughs> well, I'm not not complaining about the game. It was the your dead pun at the beginning that was the major problem. <laughs> mate, people are dying for it. <laughs> we'll, we'll just keep going on the jokes. Two. Two one, um, but yeah, I I really like Stop the Zombies. I've actually I've not actually completed it. I played it most of the way through. It's one of them I don't even know why I stopped, but I'm pretty sure I was very close to the end and enjoyed it. Like you said in the video, it's got lots of humour, hasn't it? And it's, just yeah. just the characters and the puns are, are really good. Yeah, and it is a love story. It is a love story. It's a bit like Shaun of the Dead. It's a rom com with zombies, really. Absolutely, a rom com zomb. Yeah, or is it? Yeah. A Rom -com, -com, -com. Rom com Yeah, one of them. But yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend that. I think we're two for two so far. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to come down to my game, but I'll see if it's a good one this week. So uh, this week, I have been playing Planet of Lana. So Planet Alana, the story revolves around uh, Lana on a planet with her sister after her parents have tragically passed away at some point. So we've got a very close bond and everything and all's going well, all's lovely until of course some aliens come down from the sky and abduct uh, Lana's sister. So then the object of your game is to go and rescue your sister and along the way you find a little helpful little character um, which is all I can say is an alien cat. He's a cat sort of type creature that's uh, native to the planet and um, then it can help you solve uh, puzzles because it's generally a puzzle game but what's so exciting about um, well, what's so good about this game is that it's a very cinematic game as well it's got some lovely set pieces as you go along it's beautiful to look at and there's some lovely scenes going along um, in desert areas that are shot brilliantly for a computer game um, that you go along so that's really stunning to look at the plot's very good in the sense of it, it drags you and you're not really sure what's going on, which I like to see, isn't it? It's a bit of a puzzle, like what's going on, um, why are the aliens come to attack, and how does that sort of relate to you, and obviously you get powers as you go along, um, and so does your little cat friend as well, and it's like, well, why do you get these powers? So sort of mystery as you go along, um, and like I say, it's beautifully shot, it's got a lovely soundtrack, and in just in the middle of the game as you're playing, it, it plays this beautiful song. Uh, which is sung beautifully by uh, a Scottish singer and it, it's absolutely amazing it's like a piece of cinema you're watching on a film and it's another reason a game to play is going you know why you should play games more than watch films really because it's absolutely brilliant to take part in uh, the puzzles aren't too difficult um, they you know a bit of brain scratches some of them you might have to google them a couple of them if you weren't sure I was, I was only caught out really on a couple of them just had to really think about it but basically all the information's there on the screen or nearby to sort them out um, but I can imagine that can confuse a few people not sure how to do puzzles but yeah I really love this game it's probably even my game of the year so far because it's, it's a very short one again I did it in about four to five hours and just the storyline the music to it that the whole look and stylization of it was absolutely amazing and I again it's another one I really highly recommend I played it on game pass it's on game pass at the moment if you have that but I don't think it's too expensive to get as well uh, but yeah, one should all be playing. This is when you both go, I have no idea what the hell this game is, isn't it? Correct. Correct. Have, you, have either of you played this game before? Nope. Negative. It Negative. definitely sounds like a game I would not go near. 
well, as I said in the video, this game is absolutely great. It's very cinematic, and it's honestly, it's one of those games. You only get a few games where people go, why would you play computer games? And you're like, this is a reason you should play it, and why gaming as an art form is as good as movies, you know, instead of watching films, because it's, it's brilliantly cinematic, it's very short, and it's a lovely experience to play through, and the story's just amazing, and it's very heartfelt. The music's absolutely brilliant, like I mentioned in the video. Um, it's it's brilliant. It's very moving music and everything. So, I'll, I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It's actually a game I've never played, but I really do want to play because I've talked about Shadow of the Colossus before, and the same studio, the same people behind Shadow of the Colossus also made The Last Guardian, and that has a you know it's like a sort of two D platformer version of The Last Guardian. It looks like that to me. You know, it's got a similar sort of aesthetic, um, puzzles, that kind of stuff. It looks. And and you've got like a weird pet that's cat dog something. Um, well, I'll give so you. I love so the Last nice. Guardian as well, but I mean the the thing the, the only difference is in the Last Guardian you're riding this giant animal, whereas in Planet Alana it's just a little cat alien. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I get it. it's a minor difference though. There, there, there's a lot minor. of similarities. Small it has that sort of slightly almost washed out, overexposed sort of lighting effects. There's there's quite a lot of similarities. I suspect that the people that made that were influenced by it. Probably, probably, yeah, definitely. But yeah, it, it's either way. Go and play The Last Guardian or play Planet of Lana. But they're both absolutely brilliant, and it's on Game Pass at the moment, so you can play it for free if you have Game Pass. A small fee for a small fee, you can play it. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we've done well this week, guys. I think that's free for free. Don't you agree, or do you hate my game? Sounds a bit like Power World. <laughs> All right, then. Well, a bit like the Meatloaf song, then two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Have you swapped with, <laughs> with Tim for some reason? Is this? Are you doing this to wind me up? You know, are you trying I, to get at me for something? I, I, yeah, I don't you're just swapping so. games now. I think people need to say in the comments and just go, shh, gentlemen, brilliant game, what I picked. But anyway. Next week, I'm playing Solitaire. Solitaire, the card game. I'm, I'll, go, I'll well. open Minesweeper. <laughs> so it's that time of the show again where we look at some brilliant tech uh from now or the past you know just some brilliant tech that's been made that will probably benefit your life to be honest if you want it it's available out there for you to buy if we're very clever we'll put the links in the description we probably won't but it's out there go and google it anyway gentlemen are you ready for this week's what the tech always and I this mean, better be brilliant this time a bit more enthusiasm really are you ready for this week's what the <laughs> oh, tech yeah baby yeah bring it yeah oh. <laughs> that's it that's it right have a look at this gentleman and what do you think i think it's round so i i out. concur but I also think it has a button at either side. This looks like a dial on a washing machine. <laughs> I mean, that's a great bit of tech. It I, could be a washing uh, machine. Either that or it's like something from like a, an Apple iPod, like the one with the little wheel from back in the day when they had like 20 gigabyte hard drives in them. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I, uh, another bit of great tech. Any other suggestions, Damien? No. No, fair enough. <laughs> okay, let's go with the suggestion. Can we, can we zoom it out a bit? Just, just you know. <laughs> well, in a, in a minute, once you've guessed it, I will reveal oh. all. Uh, let's see what the options are this week. It is a device that allows dogs to play music and accompany you in a song. Is it a mirror that senses your mood and displays a different color on the pad to represent the mood? Or... Is it C, part of a controller that allows people with disabilities to play computer games? Mm. That's tricky. I'm going to go, if anything, with B. A mirror that your mood. Yeah. Mm. Why, why would anybody have a mirror that senses their mood? And if you did have a mirror that senses it, it senses your mood, why would it require two buttons? I don't know. I, I don't know. Some off. people aren't the luxury, don't have the luxury of having people looking at you again. You're looking miserable today. So maybe they need the mirror to tell them that. 
a device that allows dogs to play music and accompany you in a song. You see, I then I would imagine that one of the buttons would like be a play button. So I, I'm not convinced about B. I'm leaning towards C here. Part of a controller that allows less able-bodied people to control something. They, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure Microsoft lead the way on those, and their controls are not that fiddly and small. Mm. I, so that's did, why I went for B, because why wouldn't it be? Did, did you ever see the the um, that sort of mock-up video that somebody did about this thing called the Apple Wheel, and it's basically just a tablet well, no, sorry, it's not a tablet. It's like a laptop, but the the face of the laptop, it, rather than having a keyboard or a trackpad or anything, just has a big wheel, and you just have to do this. It's like if you want to get to a file in your computer, you press the center of the wheel, and it brings up a list of alphabetical files on your computer, everything alphabetically, and then you just scroll through it until you find the one that you want. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Like I'll an, old to find rotary, that video. <laughs> an old rotary yeah. telephone without the rotor and the numbers. Now, I, I definitely think I'm going to go with definitely with a mirror that senses your mood and displays a different color on the pad to represent the mood. Because who wouldn't yeah. need that in their life, especially if you stand in front of the mirror a lot? And if I wanted to be wrong, I'd agree with Damien. It's definitely C. It's got to be C. Definitely C. So, Damien's going for B. <laughs> Tim's going for C. Shall we see what the answer is, gentlemen? Yes. It's A. It's Should a device that allows dogs to play music and accompany you in a song. Yep. Look at Why that. The... Adver... Yep. And here we go. you got some lovely dogs there wanting to play music. And as you can see, you've got a nice gentleman or lady on the guitar. And the dog's playing along as well. <clears throat> and the beauty is on the top it's got a little treat bowl so the dog has to play the song and then once they play the song they get the treat and it won't be released until they finish playing the song so the pads light up in the tune and obviously they've got to hit it on the beat and do all that yeah do you know what taylor swift she's got a dog in the background when she's on tour playing one of these bad boys I'm telling you now i could believe i <laughs> Why does this exist? It exists. <laughs> so it gets you, Tim. You didn't get it right. Yes. I, in fairness, this is the first <laughs> time, I think, that neither of us have guessed right. And norm normally I've got a pretty f good feel for stupid junk like this. But that's ridiculous. Why? No dog. Dogs howl when they hear music. Let them howl. It's fine. They don't need to press buttons as well. Well, they did. Mate, what if they want to hit a fat drum beat, you know, to play along? That's all, you know. You <laughs> they want to. They wanna if you don't, drop if your dog can't beatbox, get rid of your dog. That's you know, that's all I'm saying. That's the white stripes in the picture. You know, Meg White's left, but, you know, Jack White, he needed a new drummer. Got his dog. No, he's got one. Feel good. All, all I'm saying is dog people. Am I right? No. <laughs> to be fair, I think <laughs> that's kind of kind of cool. That's it's going to divide the audience, that's for sure. <laughs> well, but anyway, but that's what the tech this week. Yay! Okay, guys, this week's discussion is going to be something a little bit different to normal. We're going to do Desert Island Tech, and with this, all you have is Small Desert Island. The amenities of which, obviously, you've got food and things that you can enjoy. But what tech, and only one piece of tech. So, like, if you go PC, it's the full kit caboodle. So it's not just the box. You've got the monitor and everything else. And magically, in the middle of this desert island, we have a palm tree with the electric sockets or the Wi-Fi capability, depending on what tech you want to take, what are you taking with you that you can't live without? I always wanted to say a Wi-Fi extender, but then I realized that that's just dumb. Uh, it, although I kind of like the idea of having a palm tree that emits Wi-Fi. That that would be pretty I I would have that not on a desert island. I'd have that in my house. Patent pending. I'm just saying. Patent pending. <laughs> nobody else can take this. Patent pending. Wi-Fi tree. Just saying. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. 
Well, I would be tempted, actually. I mean, it, it's it's tempting to go with something like something you can play games on, something you can watch movies on. Yeah, you know, that you know, maybe something like a mobile phone or a tablet or something like that. But I'm gonna go with my ice cream making machine. <laughs> I mean, what a better way, what better way to spend your day on a desert island. Well, I say desert island, let's say dessert island with ice cream. Just sit on the beach, spooning beautiful ice cream into your gob all day. Oh, it'd be lovely. <laughs> to be fair, I'm pretty sold on that idea. Fair yeah, it's, it's not bad. <laughs> Does this ice cream machine make different flavours, though? Oh, we can make whatever flavour you like. We're assuming that we've got access to whatever food we need. So, so okay. long as we've got, you know, uh, milk and cream, then uh, so long as I've got flavours of sorts, I can make whatever. Fair enough. So out, of, fair enough. out of everything in the world, tech-wise, that you could have took with you, you're just going with an ice cream machine. Yes. Yep. 100%. Final answer. Well, well, the bar's set high, Damien. Do you think you could beat that? or shall I... <laughs> I think I think you should have a go, Chris. What, what you would should you have say? A go. The, the, the item you can't do without, the one piece of technology you need. No, no. Well, I thought I'd be... I haven't really thought about it too much, but I thought that I would probably take one of those American-style big fridge freezers, you know, with the two doors, that has a mm. screen in it, one of those smart ones, because then I can play Doom on it, and I can watch a bit of Netflix probably. <laughs> and, you know, it can sort my life out when I forget stuff. You know, do this because it's got a tablet. It's all pretty clever. It's a computer, really, is it? But it's also a fridge. So obviously it keeps all my food lovely cool how you want it. Plus, if there's a nuclear bomb coming down, I can jump in. I've seen Indiana Jones do it. You jump in, I'm safe. Yeah, that's just All the science. bases are covered. All the bases are covered. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, it's a multi-tool, but, basically, is what you say. It saying. is a multi-tool. It's a multi-tool for the generation where you have power and Wi-Fi in your palm tree next to it. So, plus, if we're there. stuck on the same island, then then I can bring you my ice cream and you can keep it in your freezer. No, you can you can put your ice cream in. There's no room in the fridge because I've got to get in there in case of a nuclear... It's not for there. the fridge. It goes in the freezer. Is there a freezer compartment? I don't know. Well, then if you've got an American-style fridge freezer, then yeah. That's what I've got. It's a big sort of double-door jobby. I would let you watch me play Doom, though, because I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> well, I'd let Sherry. you watch me eat ice cream. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> anyway, well, Damien, can you top those answers? Well, you go to Desert Island with... Well, out of everything I could possibly think of, um, I think I'd just be really simplistic and just take a kettle. Kettle? Yes. Would you, would you have any tea bags with it? Or, you know... Well, like oh. we've already gone with the fact that the the coffee is already available, you know. I, but it, I can I can boil the water. Unlike you, like, I'm going to have a warm beverage, and if I need it's to a, boil some a... water, I can boil some water to make it pure and clean. I'm just it's saying a, it's, it's a... multifaceted. I mean, and it's a good defense tool as well. Yeah, yeah, but if pirates come along and you can't fight them off with a fridge, and you're definitely not going to beat them. Nice Nice yeah, cuppa. I'm going to go, here's a couple of boys, or use the kettle as a shield and or, or a, a battering weapon. Sort of everything. Throw boiling water in their face. Yeah. I mean, a couple just chills everyone right down. Like, Whoa, well, yeah. have a brew, mate. Have a Here, brew. have some Earl Grey. Everything Earl will Grey, be calm you the right. Beautiful. Chill out. Yeah, be great. X marks the spot and coffee hits the spot, eh? Absolutely. From salt. <laughs> That they're all good answers, then, gentlemen. So, uh, what do we think for the, if we had no tech? This palm tree is not a magical palm tree with Wi Fi and all that power in it. Um, what, what options would we pick? Tim, let's go to you first. What would you pick in a survival situation? So, so now we don't have access to food or anything like that. Is this is oh. actual survival? Go on, because, then, yeah. because the, the my initial thought if, if, there, if there's no food, water, or anything. My my initial thought was going to be maybe just a, a knife, not you know, a good a decent hunting knife, something along those lines. Ideally, one of those ones that has like a a a, a flint or something in the back end of it, so that you can make fire if you need to. That way, with a knife, you can hunt, you can chop, you can cook, you can make traps, you can basically you can do everything. And with like the, the flint and the the hilt, you can make yourself fire and cook whatever you've got. Um, if it, if if food is still on the table, however, 
I would probably take like a tablet with a a solar. Well, now you see this is where this is where it gets into maybe two things, like a solar charger with a you know battery bank with a solar back panel on it, and a tablet. But that's two things now. So one thing, go with the one knife. Thing. Knife it is. It's not one. It's not one thing. Well, does the, does the knife with like the <laughs> flint thing in the back? That, that counts as one thing because it's it's yeah, yeah. Rambo tech. That's basically what you wanted to do there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I could. I definitely see myself as Rambo. I always have. <laughs> Fair enough. Can't argue with that. <laughs> uh, Damien, can you top? Well, I, where, mm. a knife is that? Pretty much what we decided on. <laughs> well, that's it's a uni tool, isn't it? Mm. I think. I would see that knife and I would raise it to a spork. It's a spoon and a fork. I can use it for eating. I can use it for stappy iteming. I can use it for digging. Multi tool. No, it's rubbish. You need a nork for that. Ooh, or a nork. A nork, because then you've still got the knife. Yeah. But you've also got a fork. Yeah, but you won't how have a do spoon. I, I can't. Dig how do you eat it? soup? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sticking with I'm the, just... the spark. I'm going with the spark. <laughs> you got your coconut and you're like, it just runs through the fork bit. <laughs> Fair enough. Very sensible. Very sensible. Um, Come on, Chris. Show us how it's done. I would have to go with a wind-up radio. So I got some kicking tunes, uh, you know, so you do it. So I could I could use my hands to get the food. You know, you can imagine you get any fish and then you pick up like a a cracking 90s station, you know, a bit of Corona, Rhythm of a Night. It's a rhythm of a night! As you're beating up your fish, it's just helping, motivating you. I could just see that. Even if it was a bit of static, just a bit of a bit. You know, it's going to help me, motivate me, isn't it? And it's someone to talk to if I'm, you know, listen to. Have some nice, you know, no, you need radio Wilson for that. or something. Oh, I could have took a Wilson. I could have took a Wilson. I don't play football, but, you know. <laughs> no. No. And then you'd lose um, it and it'd float away, it'd be too emotional. But you'd then you'd have to scream, it. wouldn't you? You'd be like, Wilson! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, I think we've done well there in helping the viewers once again help if they're stuck on a desert island somewhere, you know, what should plan, you know, to have and take with them, especially if they've got Wi Fi and power in a palm tree that happened to go on this desert island. But, you Ma- know, magical palm tree. Pending. Yeah. Patent pending. Patent pending. Patent pending. Now it's that time in the show where we take on a viewer's letter. They will present us with some crazy conundrum and we have to solve it the only way we know how, by playing a game. Some say he once took a lie detector test and the machine confessed everything. Others say he can squeeze orange juice out of a lemon. All we know is, he's the Games Meister. Thank you boys for such a lovely introduction. Now, on to this week's letter. And this week, we are looking into the matters of love. Let's find out if we can help this viewer. Dear Slossy Tin there, I hope this missive finds you well, or at least as well as it can be in a world where the concept of time is as fluid as a melting clock. I am death, the anthropomorphic personification of the inevitable, and I find myself in a rather peculiar predicament. You see, despite my eternal existence and mastery over the great cosmic clockwork, matters of the heart remain elusive to me. Now, I am aware that my skeletal visage and penchant for quoting obscure poetry might not be everyone's cup of tea, but surely even death deserves a chance at companionship, right? After all, I've been around since the dawn of existence, and I've witnessed countless love stories unfold, from the tragic to the heartwarming. Yet, when it comes to my own romantic endeavours, I find myself as awkward as a misplaced apostrophe. Let us address the specifics. Binky, my trusted steed, 
has been a loyal companion through the eons, and together we gallop across the astral planes, ferrying souls to their final destinations. But alas, Binky is more interested in oats and the occasional carrot than matters of the heart. I suspect he secretly judges my choice of robes, but he's too polite to say so outright. As for my love of cats, well it's no secret. Cats are the universe's most enigmatic creatures, aloof, mysterious, and utterly indifferent to the laws of physics. I've tried bonding with them during my downtime, yes, even death has downtime, but they merely regard me with disdain. Perhaps they sense my eternal nature and find it off putting. Or maybe they're just waiting for me to open a can of tuna. Who can fathom the feline mind? And then there's curry. Ah, the spicy delight that warms my non-existent soul. I sample curries from every corner of existence. The fiery vindaloos of Vorbis, the aromatic masalas of Ankh-Morpork, and the ethereal dance acts of the Discworld's Edge. But alas, curry nights are a solitary affair for death. No one to share the naan with, no one to debate the merits of cilantro versus coriander. So, my dear slotted in uh, friends, here lies my dilemma. How does one court love when one's very existence is a cosmic paradox? Should I attend speed dating events for immortals? Should I update my Tinder profile to include Master of the Hourglass under occupation? Or perhaps I should take up salsa dancing, though I fear my bony frame might be a bit of a liability on the dance floor. Your advice would be most appreciated, and if you happen to know any celestial matchmakers or sentient constellations with a penchant for matchmaking, do send them my way. Binky and I wait your wisdom. Yours, cryptically, Death. Well, 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 what do you make of that, boys? Do you think you can help our anthropomorphic personification or not? Only you boys can tell. And this week, the challenge will be undertaken by Tim. Timothy, this week you will be playing Pac-Man World Championship DX+. Plus. And your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to beat my score. One play, no practicing, first past the post. Chomp! So that's another tricky predicament we find our viewer in this time. So, Tim, you're taking the challenge. Uh, should you uh, let people accept death for who he is um, and keep trying to touch people uh, that he meets in the usual way? Or should you maybe try that online dating, you know, uh, for a long-distance relationship? What do you feel death should do? Long-distance relationship? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. No, no, I think, I think death should do what he's supposed to do. I think he should go around being a bit, touchy feely with people that's probably a bad move but <laughs> at the same time that's what death does touches you on the shoulder with the old scythe off you go that's what i'm going with okay then tim let's see how you did <laughs> all right okay Ooh. I seem to have released a ghost. Oh, he's chasing for sure. How long do I have to get to those guys? Right. And I think you can go off into the top and bottom of the screen. Yep, yeah, we can. That's good. What is the deal with this? I don't understand how any of this works. I'm just sort of going around. If I just avoid going anywhere near the ghost, do they not chase me? Oops. I've, I'm beginning to think they don't chase me if I just stay away from them. 
so let's just stay away from them then I guess uh, oh no I don't want to take that one yet what I do want to do though is that for sure oh I didn't really mean to pick up that next one oh we're moving quick now let's take him oh him out There is another ghost down there, but I don't have time to get to him. Damn. Okay, he's after me now. That's possibly a problem. Oh, this one's after me now. Uh, oh, no, no. Ooh, okay. Right. We're just going to have to keep going for it, aren't we? Oh, no. No, 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 no. We desperately need something to... This is getting bad. We need we need someone to counter the ghosts. There isn't anything. I'm just collecting more and more ghosts. Oh my goodness. Um, what's that thing up at the top there? I want that. I don't know what that is, but I want it. Oh, good grief. Oh no. Yes, someone to counter the ghosts. Right, here we go. Bam, 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 bam. That's the stuff. Right, let's see if we can clear all of these guys out. Nice. Can I... Oh, I can't take him. Might as well do the damage while we can. Oh, no! Um... Oh, no, I didn't really want to pick him up. Oh, boy! Okay. Do I just get... How many lives do I get? Do I get three lives? Oh, my God, this is... Oh, boy. A key? Oh, no! No, 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 no! <laughs> We're going to have to go past that one. We've got to do just keep going. Keep going. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, right, what's that do? Does that do anything? No. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, how did I get away with doing that? I don't understand how this works. Uh, ooh. We really could do with something to counter the ghosts again now. I see one. I see one. No, 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 no. No. I saw one, but I couldn't get to it. Okay, we've got... We've got more lives, I think. Oh, they're all straight back out after me. Here we go. Get him. That one, that one, that one. Back down here. Right, this is... Oh! oh I timed out. I wasn't looking. Oh, no. I didn't mean to wake him up. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. That's just mean. I was doing so well and all of a sudden this happens. Okay. Gonna get that one too. There we go. Okay. He came out of nowhere. Oh, they're starting to get a bit cheeky now. Oh! Yes! Oh, no, 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 go, turn, turn, turn! No! We're supposed to turn faster than that. Oh, boy. Uh... Get a few more just before the time runs out. I don't know what that score was. 400 and... Was that it? 429,000. Okay. Let's see what you got, Gamesmeister. Well, the results are in. And, uh, Tim, what you got to say for yourself? Well, what I want to say for myself is before the challenge, I was told I wasn't allowed to read up about the game. I wasn't allowed to play the game. I just had to go into it cold. So I didn't know, you know, with it being Pac-Man and all, that there are bombs. I, I didn't know there were bombs. It's, it's, it's unfair. It's, the, the games master had an unfair advantage. He told me that I wasn't allowed to investigate the game at all. If I'd known about the bombs from the beginning, I'd have, I'd have smashed it, smashed it out of the park. I mean, I was kept in the dark. 
A poor workman always blames his tools, Tim. Come on, you could have figured that out. Could have pressed all the buttons on your keyboard. It's Pac-Man. Pac-Man <laughs> doesn't have bombs normally. <laughs> when you play a game for the first time, you just whack all the buttons, don't you, to find out what happens. You could have done that. Only, if, only if I'm playing Tekken and choosing Eddie do I do that. And that's only to annoy everybody that plays against me. <laughs> so, uh, well, basically, now you condemned uh, Dev to having a long-term relationship, a long-distance relationship, because he's not allowed to be, get close to people and touch them. But it might be for the best. We don't know, but that's the way we sold it by him playing games poorly so good luck Dan. play it poorly i played it well but without all the tools in my box gaming 101 just smash all the keys Top it's not how you play games and that's it once again we're at the end of the show um i hope you enjoyed this lovely tech ride as always and we gave you some useful facts i mean it's a fact finding program isn't it it helps you with your life it's a lifestyle program we've helped you it clearly has um as always don't forget to like and subscribe don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section <laughs> tickle oh. the bell so you're reminded <laughs> of uploads in the future and as always we like to end the show with a very inspirational quote and this week it comes from winston churchill who once said that in australia there are 48 million kangaroos and uruguay there are 3 million 457 thousand 380 inhabitants so, if the kangaroos decide to invade Uruguay, each Uruguayan will have to fight 14 kangaroos. And on that blue screen of death, I think that's the end of the show. I think, I think we'd better leave it there. Bye. Yeah, Bye. It's, it's probably for the best. Bye-bye.